Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about ng class directive, and we'll see what it does. So let's. I have the code uh, already written out here. You will be able to. I will. I will go through it, but let's just go over to the site and see what's going on here. As you can see, I was doing some testing. So if I, I've added a button select, and when I click on that button select, the background changes color to this horrifically eye, well, it's painful for, uh, green, that's painful for the eyes. Let's put it like that. If I click deselect, it is, the color changes to a pleasant gray. Select, deselect, you see what is happening. So how do we go about implementing this logic? Well, uh, the very first thing that we'll need to do is go into the CSS. And, well, that's not the first thing that you do, but I'm just explaining it in that order. You'll put dot selected, and you will put the background color to this horrific green. Now, we're going to go ahead and enter the app component dot ts. And here there are a few things that we need to do. So let's begin from the top. Uh, the first thing that we're going to need to do is basically, let me just see where it is. Ah, okay. So create this array. This is basically a private property of type array whose elements will be of type Boolean. And we have already initialized two of them. We have stated that we have populated two of them. So this is false, false. And we would like the initial status of our first two accounts to be non-selected, non-selected. So you can see uh, the the constructor has been removed and I have simply added this to initialize, to do two initializations in the same way without the constructor. Anyway, so this array, it immediately sets the initial status for both of them, for both accounts to be false, false, so they are not selected. And down below, we have a function, we have a method which basically determines whether something has been selected or not. So it says this dot underline selected and index at some index, which is basically passed to the function. So we're determining which ID we would, which element of which ID we would like to be selected or deselected. And then we're just negating the status of the element of this array. So it says selected, and then it says, I don't know, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So go to element 5, take the value of element 5. So this dot selected will take the element of value 5. And let's say that that value is false. It will equal to false being negated because this and this will produce the same value. But since we have an exclamation mark, this will be negated. This here will be negated, so false will become true, and true will become false. We're basically just reversing whether a certain element of the array is false or true. If it was false, it will become true. If it was true, it will become false. Simple as that. Now, during the creation of the new account, we would also like uh, to add the initial status of the new account, which will be false. So this underline selected dot push, as you can see, this is no different from adding a new account, except we are populating the other array as well, which records the status of whether something of of whether for that particular account is the selected option false or true. And we of course have the deletion here set as well. So when we remove the account, we would also like to remove its data, its selected status, whether the selected status is false or true, we would also like to delete that. So you can basically say that this Boolean array here is matching the accounts array. So one and the two, one is matching the other in terms of how many elements it has and its positions. So for each account, for each element of the account, for each element of the how did I name it? Uh, selected array, select, remove, create account, 
accounts. Where is the accounts? Where have I placed it? Ah, okay. So for each element of the array, of the array accounts, please have a status recorded in a different array, which is basically selected, underline selected, that is its name. So each one of those, in fact, let me just go ahead and do this. Control X and place it. Private accounts. Okay, so let's just place it here. So you see each one of these elements, this could have been done probably a different way. You could have placed, uh, you could have placed an additional field here, but doesn't really matter. So anyway, you have, why won't it highlight it? Okay, well, you can put a semicolon. Oh, there we go. You can put a semicolon, then the highlighting will work. Anyway, as I was saying, each element of the selected array will match elements of the accounts array. So each element of the accounts array will have its status designated as false or true. The initial status for this account and this account is basically false and false. And this will be the default. I've left a comment here, small one. And this will be the default state of each new created account as as you can see, uh, when an account is created, a false or true value is added to our selected array. So we're immediately adding false. In this case, we're not going to be adding true because we want the initial status of all new accounts to be unselected. Only in the case that the user selects it, will it become true. Okay, now let's go to the HTML. And there's just one thing that has been changed in the entirety of the HTML and that is the ng class directive, which has been added. And in addition to that, we've also created a select or deselect button. So let's go over those two. So you have ng class directive, which is equal to something here, something strange. Basically, uh, the syntax is the same as with property binding. So we will need the curly braces and this what you see this what you see here this is an object uh, this here selected this is a property and to the right this underline selected is the value of the property so you have selected and then you have underline selected and the element of the array is specified that element of the array is specified through the index which we have used in the ng4. This will in effect, basically, if the value pulled from the array is true, the source code for this will look something like this. So ACC underline selected. If the value of underline selected, if the value pulled from this array is false, the code will look like this. So that's what the ng class does here. It basically determines whether this is true or not and whether this will be included in the class or not. We will see that in the source code of the site when we debug it a little bit and see the output. Down here below, we have a button. So on click, we would like to call a method select and pass an index and pass, pass, the, pass the index to it. Then you have, so nothing nothing really new here, but you have a bit of a logic here. So this is basically a simpler way or a shorter way of writing an if statement. So this will pull a value from the selected array. And if that value, depending on whether the value is false or true. So if it's true, you will have deselect. That will be the name in the button. If it's false, you will have select in the name of the button. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this actually works. When I press select, this happens. When I press deselect, this happens. Okay, let's press F12. And okay, so let me just find it, my app. Okay, let me just click on it a couple of times. Okay, so 
you see here, since it's not selected, it says div class equals ACC. Okay, so nothing strange there, nothing new, that's fine. But if I click on select, you see it says ACC selected. And since it says here selected, we have our good old fashioned CSS. It says dot selected, and this is the background for it. So if the CSS sees this dot selected, that is uh, implemented here, ACC underline selected, it will of course change the background color to this particular color here. I know it's a little bit, I know it's a lot to take in just like this. Believe me, it is very simple. If you have any questions, feel free to pose them. We will gladly answer them without any problems whatsoever and we will gladly offer further explanation and insight as needed. But for the time being, I bid you farewell and we shall continue onwards.